Okay, back on the train here. I just did a mock up of the shifting here. And I'm using my punch here instead of the rope in and gauge it. It also gives me a handle to work at the front. So you're able to shift the gears here. And you make it shift. And you make it work there. And that's one gear. So you get your H pattern. That should be reverse gear there. Should be turning the other way now. And real slow. And that should be overdrive, so now it goes fast the other direction. So, get all your different gears here. That's probably low gear because it works real free. So anyway, I just want to make sure everything's working before I seal it all up. Because you have to seal the covers on the back piece, it always has to go to the unit. So there's a spring and a ball up underneath in here. And you're supposed to put a bunch of your grease and stuff up in here. So I want to just get this mocked up so I can make sure it worked before I goop it all up. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. And I'll show you how to put it back together. Correctly, maybe. At least how I did it anyway. Let's go and get a picture of what we got here. So there's the tranny. Not a very good view, I don't think, but maybe a little higher might help. Alright. First thing we do we take the tail housing off. And we got three bolts on there for mock-up. You know, this plunger has a spring and bowl in here, so it'll come out as you lose it here. Alright. So, there's your ball bearing, there's your spring. So don't lose those. But possibly might need them. We got a cover here. Two dowling bolts, which are these two left here. They align the top cover so everything lines up and shift fork wise. <clears throat> so these have the uh, dowel studs built in here. So that's the two big holes in your cover here is where they go. Now to get this on and off, you have to slide it sideways and then lift. And everything comes right out. Alright, so, get all that in there, wipe this down, make sure there's no oil on the surface, it's going together for real now. Chipping all my teeth down there, somebody's been abusing it, I wonder who that was. My three bond sealer here again. So you can use whatever you want to use. I don't like silicone, so I use my three bond. So instead of putting a big bead on here and having a big mess, I just put on a little bit of it. How I like doing it. So I get nice and messy at the same time. That makes it better, I think. I 
Now this stuff will chew up if it gets inside the trainer. Silicone doesn't tend to want to go away. That's why I don't like it. Too long to do it this way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the lid over here. So I'm going to make sure I got a good, good seal. Sorry, you're getting more messy doing it twice. So you just want a nice thin coat, don't need no big heavy buildup. Just make sure you get the whole surface coated. This is an older tube, so it's a little bit thicker than one else. Not a problem. Feel better. We want to try to keep it off the shift forks here if we can. It's on there, so I know it's already lined up. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, basically, just flip this over. Try not to touch anything, it's gooey. You have to be a neutral. Slip it down and slide over. Wiggle it back and forth until it goes over the reverse fork in there. And you're in. No forcing. You have to force it, something's wrong. So you get your two dalkins in here first, dowel bolts. There you go. We're going to go ahead and put all our little bolts in here. So we've got silicone on them, which I don't like, so I take that off. Bolts are all the same length, so they go anywhere you want. And I can see the mark over here with the strap for that clamp. So that would have been either this one or this one. Now this one I'm not using. I think it was on one of these forward ones. And this one here hold some kind of a wire up. And going by the shape of it, it was this one. So you can see how the mark was. That was down. This was up because it only has the bolt mark on it. So this one goes over here. It's supposed to have a cable going up here. I think it's like an O2 sensor connector. Okay, then we got this one over here. So the other place that there's a mark is right here in the case, there's a round mark, and so this goes right here. So even though I don't remember where all the parts go, you just kind of look at the evidence that's left behind and it gives you an idea where it goes. Okay, make sure you get all the bolts in here started, we're in about halfway at least. That way it gets, make sure everything's lined up with binding. Okay, move it around a little bit, kind of self spot the neutral point, and tighten up the dowel bolts. And 
go ahead and get the rest of them. I just start in the middle, work my way out like most things you torque. Back in your front or front and back, whichever way you prefer. Now these are little tall, little small bolts. You don't torque the hell out of them. You don't really need to be that tight anyway. They're only holding the cover down. But I do want a little torque on it, so I use my normal Tetra torque. Tighten the hell out of it. here so I can't get too awful tight. But I could probably break these if I wanted to. Okay, so this is nice and free and still moves, but don't move it, just make sure it's not bound up. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now we can get the back of the churn together. That's a little more tricky. You have to fish it through here, get all this line up, and get it all in here with bolts in there. Now this one here, the bearing is loose under here, so... To make sure it lines up correctly, I'm going to go ahead and install the bearing in my cover here. Just to make sure it stays where it's supposed to be. So I'll put a little bit of grease on here, down inside here, make sure it stays. So, I'm going to go ahead and goop this all up and I'll be back. Now we have to watch me goop it up for five minutes. We'll be back.